Hey guys, in this video I'm going to be showing you how to make your chord sequences come to life. Okay, so here we are, I've got a logic session opened up. Um, it's going to be a nice quick video uh, today uh, because I just want to get you guys writing straight away. Um, and I'm going to give you a chord sequence to work with because this is a chord sequence so many Trello computers work with. Um, and it's an amazing one. It's great for slow burn. It's great for family adventure. It's great for drama. It's great for almost all genres of trailer. And that's why it's good for us. Uh, and then what I'll do is I'll just give you a couple of tips as to how to make that chord sequence come to life. Um, I'm going to say there's two. There's more than two, but these two are the two you need to focus on just to bring them to life. Some of them, uh, you probably know both of them, but it's just a good slap in the face reminder because sometimes I need to be reminded of the very, very simple and basic stuff. Um, for instance, uh, I I'm always need to be reminded about four-part harmony. It all comes out of four-part harmony, Rich. Stop panicking and getting your uh, pants in a twist. It's four-part harmony. Now, in this video, I'm not going to be dealing with four-part harmony. I'm going to be dealing with a chord sequence and then a couple of tips to make your chord sequences sound better. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to load up a pinano, as my son would call it, a piano. Uh, he's only three, by the way. Um, keyboards. Here we are, keys. Let's go with something like... Hmm, the Woodchester piano, which is a nice piano. There we go. Chord sequence is going to be. C minor, which is a minor one. B flat, which is a major flat and seven. A flat, which is a major flat and sixth G major which is a dominant seven well it can be if you add the seventh in but it's what you're doing there is you're not sent you're not essentially not changing key you're borrowing notes from a di different scale but you're going you're in the C Aeolian natural minor that is and then you you borrow the B natural to make this G major so let's just play it in. In fact, no, I'm not going to play it in. I'm going to draw it in. Uh, pencil. There we are. Uh, and it's going to be two bars per chord sequence. There we go. That's two bars. There we go. So notice I'm just drawing these in because I want to kind of show you that you can you can make this stuff come to life even if you can't play it in which you know if I did play it in I would have to do a lot of quantizing not just because of my uh, um, keyboard skills but also because of the latency I'm experiencing currently so you notice guys what I'm just drawing in here are those chords I mentioned C E flat G B flat D F a flat C E flat and then it would be G and then here you see we're borrowing that B D nice you, I mean there are things that you can do immediately to make this sound a bit prettier uh, but I'm not going to cover those bits right now. I'm just going to be, I've just copied and pasted because I love doing that. And I'm going to go to open up the automation tab, uh, modulation, and I'm just going to do the first thing you can do to make your chord sequence come to life is if you've got long sustained notes played by instruments that are able to carry sustain, which most of them are, um, and in this instance, it's strings using the original Albion's strings because they sound so good. PS, 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 PS. Yes, yes, yes. There we go. So let's have a listen to this. Oops. 
Okay, first mistake. I don't like it. I like that sl- swell in the middle of a chord when it spans a longer chord sequence. But when it's just quite quick like that, it's not what I'm looking for, I'm afraid. I'd like this swelling into the next chord. Yes, Avengers Endgame, here we are. Um, Right, here we go. Uh, Let's just copy and paste that and glue those together. Uh, And then, so so I'm going to take that one step further. I'm just going to notch these up a little bit more so that it progressively, oh, it starts a bit too quiet there, doesn't it? It progressively gets a little bit louder each time the chord progression is swelling. And that, again, is something that enables your chord progressions to have life uh, and it uh, and it enables them to feel like they're moving forward. That's a 30-second chord sequence from four chords and using automation. Fab, right? I mean, it's so simple. And and it, it just immediately you're in the film score world. Uh, and there are things that we can do immediately to help that feel more so. Uh, so the first thing I can do is um, I can play with the stereo field. Uh, and I'll give you extra tips here that I didn't mention. So the first tip is obviously using automation to bring your chords to life. And I'll get to the next one in a minute. Um, Direction mixer. So you can play with the stereo field. These are essentially my second violins. Let's try again. These are essentially my second violins. Okay, so let's just uh, duplicate this. Um, And I'm going to add in some viola parts. And you'll never guess what. So the viola's limit here is C2. Ah. So I'm going to drop this down an octave. Keep these up an octave. So everything above C. It's going to be like that. Okay. And I'm probably going to drop these guys down too because I don't really... There we go. So it's just shifted in uh, the inversion of the chord. And I'm now going to send them to the right, just to give it a little bit more life, lifelike sounds. Okay, just to be a bit more realistic, I probably wouldn't have a close voicing like that down here. Um, uh, just to keep it feeling open, and I would probably take out, what have we got, D and G. Although I do like the B there, I'll probably take the B out there. So I'm doing naughty things here by using parallel fifths, but you know. Okay, so I can progress this, but that's what I'm doing. What, what happened there is I'm then moving on to a separate point. The point here is that I've used automation and then further to that voicings and stereo imaging to help bring my chords sequence to life. The next thing I'm going to use, and this is the big one, and again, it's one of those things you can be like, oh, Rich, come on. Automation is the first one. Yes, I know that's obvious. This second one is also obvious, and 
I don't care if you think it's obvious, because you need to utilize this. It is arpeggios, i.e. movement. Uh, so you're using dynamics and you're using movement to bring your chords to life. Now, I'm not going to use the wood jester for this, although I originally loaded it up. It's not the right piano for this type of sound. If I was to use a piano, it would be maybe Alicia Keys or another grand that was sort of in the distance all sparkly and nice and expensive. Uh, but I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use carry on with my strings. Uh, it's going to be my cellos. Cellos. Uh, low TM. There we go. And I'm going to open the direction mixer, push them over to where the cellos like to sit. Now I get a lot of questions about this um, from students and from people watching my tutorials. Uh, Rich, how come you're panning in instruments that already have the panning baked into the samples? Uh, because I like it. It usually sounds a bit better. It gives a little bit more... Um, I usually limit the stereo span as well. It gives a little bit better stereo imaging. Um, and it just enhances the sound. Sometimes I don't use it, but most of the time I do. Um, there we go. And let's just reduce the stereo spread a little bit. Same with these guys. There is another way you can do this in Logic using the... Um, what's it? Control down here. There we go. Stereo pan, but I'm not going to do that. I like. I still like using the direction mixer. Here we go. Uh, have I got the right samples? Yes, but it hasn't changed the name. So strings. Low, TM. Low time machine. That was... Um, essentially spiccato and I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna play this stuff in um now arpeggios yes <laughs> Okay, so what I'm talking about arpeggios, I'm, I'm, it's a very broad term I'm talking about here. So arpeggios traditionally are uh, separating the, the tones of a chord and playing them individually. Uh, in this instance, I'm extending the chord to become a C minor add nine, um, or even some kind of A flat. Okay, so... Um, what we're talking here is the two things that help chord, bring your chord sequences, come, make them come to life. Uh, first one was dynamics, which is raising and lowering the volume, and also, or at least raising and lowering the intensity the instrument is played with, um, which results in volume changes. Uh, now in this one, we are adding movement, which immediately gives your piece life. So, let me draw this in again. I, I'm yeah, I'm going untraditional. I'm I'm going to draw it in, and I'm going to draw it in because I'm going to keep the same notes all the way through. It's going to be uh, an ar arpeggio ostinato. Beep, 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 beep. One, two, three, four. There we go. Hey, okay. Now let's just. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this and copy and paste. Who doesn't love a bit of looping? Who doesn't love a bit of looping? And now we're going to glue all of these guys together. Now we're going to open this up and we're going to look at this with the same eye that we did with the expressive uh, modulation. We want this to sound alive as well, and you can do that in the same manner with your note velocity control. Now, I'm just gonna do a big, big rise like that. I, I mean, I could, and I could, and I would often get more detailed with this, but the, essentially, you're adding the two together so that the uh, arpeggios are bringing your chord sequence to life with movement, and then you're enhancing those arpeggios with growing in dynamics, which is what we did in the first.
Okay, so you can see immediately that those two things, the dynamics and the arpeggios, and again, in using dynamics with the arpeggios, has brought this simple chord sequence to life. I mean, it sounds very bland when it's just played me, 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 me. Uh, but when you do this, all of a sudden, it sounds awesome. I mean, I think it sounds awesome anyway. Um, and, and, you know, had I not been talking, this would have taken me all of a couple of minutes because I'd pre-decided the chord sequence. Um, and, you know, admittedly, I was falling on lazy finger patterns with the, uh, with the arpeggio. But, uh, you know, if you listen to most trailers, you're going to be experiencing the same arpeggios or same um, ostinatos going on. So... That was how I simply brought a chord sequence to life and I've got the first 30 seconds of my trailer and I would easily, by doing exactly what I've done here, uh, be able to push this to a three minute cue within the next half an hour by just copying and pasting the chord sequence, expanding the range but with the instruments and just altering the voicings, uh, be, be wary to put them in the stereo field and then exploring the arpeggio and how that would develop if it would develop at all uh, i you know i'm a sucker for an arpeggio that, that carries on throughout the whole song because it, it by nature its contrast against the moving chords gives tension and release tension and release tension and release so it's doing its job just by being exactly the same and also you know love of steve reich love of repeated ideas love of philip glass repeating ideas um now that's what you can do. You can, if you want to write a trailer cue that's uh, kind of like this lovely slow burn epic sound, then you just decide a chord sequence first, and then you. I just draw. I just drew it in. Draw it in. Uh, copy paste. Copy paste. Copy paste. And then play with the automation. Uh, Bob's your uncle, or you know maybe not. Uh, you have your trailer cue. Uh, I really hope you enjoyed this. Uh, tutorial. I really enjoy it. I love talking about this stuff. It's very interesting for me uh, and it's so much fun. Um, if you like the video, click like and subscribe to my channel. If you want to learn more about trailer music, you can go to the Trailer Music School uh, where I have courses and all resources for trailer music com composers. Um, I also have a podcast you can listen to called the Trailer Music Composers Podcast, which is more of me blabbering about trailer music and creativity and mindset and all sorts of um, stuff related to writing for film trailers. Uh, take care, guys.